Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Our God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you for your abiding presence. We thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for your excellent greatness. We thank you for everything. In all things, we give thanks for your will concerning us, dear Lord. And we thank you for this faithful people that's gathered together, dear Lord, in this yes. holy place. And we thank you, dear Lord, for all those that we reach according to your will, dear Lord. And we thank you that this wonderful manifestation is coming forth of sons of God because there are holy people willing to hear what it is that you have to say, dear Lord. You're teaching us and you're building us up in your way, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for it. And we give you praise, Lord, for the spiritual house in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, as we sit at your feet, we thank you for your precious spirit of truth. We receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As we go together, let's go, uh, sit down together. Let us go together to Luke chapter 10. You may notice that last time we came together, we also were ministering from Luke. Luke uh, like all the Gospels, have us this wonderful picture of our Lord, and we're so thankful for that. And just as we saw such beautiful truths of him uh, reflecting through the woman with the alabaster box, we'll see the, uh, this similar thread as we look at the Good Samaritan today. And I'll just ask you, um, I know we, these are scriptures that we probably grew up on little children in Sunday school. Like I said before, my mind goes back to the little cards we get. We take, have to take our lesson from the little Sunday school cards. And I remember stories like this from a child. But I'm telling you, there's a wonderful hidden mystery within them. And they, this mystery is unveiled by the Spirit of Christ. And what you'll see is his great works. And you can have your heart sealed that we do not have to doubt our gospel at any time. It is as sure as it can be. And we can stand on it. It will take us to eternity, through eternity. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a foundation that Christ is, and nothing is going to change that. And we are building up upon that wonderful foundation, praise the name of the Lord. So in Luke's gospel, you'll find that this particular parable is unique to it. I notice things like that because you can learn a lot. Because what is Luke showing us? He's showing us the man. In the old covenant, the prophet uh, Zechariah said that there's a man and he's called the branch. Let's, before we do something at Luke, let's go look at it just a minute. Zechariah. If you don't mind. Zechariah chapter 3. Praise the Lord. This is the man Christ Jesus that we see coming through so beautifully in Luke's gospel. That's why I want to just take a little time here because we want to look at Luke's parables of this, this branch man, Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. In Zechariah, the prophet Zechariah, in chapter 3, he's talking about the cleansing of the high priest. Go down to verse 8. It says, Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. You see this? Out of the branch, for behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graven thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. That's what happened on the day he was crucified, praise God. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye shall ye shall call, in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man. This is important. Remember this verse. We'll need when we get over to Luke. In that day, said the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor <clears throat> under the vine and under the fig tree. 
You see that? Praise the Lord. Then also, in uh, Zechariah chapter uh, 6, let's see, in verse 12, he's mentioned again. When it talks about the crowning of Joshua, in verse 12, it says, Speak unto him, say, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. You see that? This branch. How many remember a scripture kind of like this from, from Isaiah? We've, we've spoken a lot here in Isaiah chapter 11. It says, it says, There shall come a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. You see that everything, this is so wonderfully consistent, praise God. And it goes on to talk about how he will be, be filled with the spirit of the Lord. So now with that, what we've just heard about Christ Jesus, the wonderful branch, let's go to Luke chapter 10 and hear what the Lord would say to us today. That's all right with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Sure it's all right with me. Thank you, Master. We'll start at verse 29. Verse 29. Well, I'm going to go back up. To, I'm going to go back up to verse 25, okay? Let's go to verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Don't forget, this is a lawyer. What is he familiar with? He's familiar with the law, right? So then, and he answering said, the lawyer's answer said now, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Now listen, he is a lawyer, he knows the law, he asked Jesus a question, Jesus asks him, well, what's written in your law? And then when he answers, Jesus tells him he answers right. That's not good enough for law. Remember this when you're dealing with religion. That's not good enough because listen to the next verse. But he, willing to justify himself, see that? The, 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 what the law is going to do, what religion will do, is try to bring its own righteousness into spiritual things. That won't work. You see that? That's not going to work. It, it, it has, there is no righteousness but the Lord's righteousness. You see that? But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? You see, we just saw over there when, <clears throat> when Zechariah prophesied about the branch man. In his day, everybody be called your neighbor. Mm -hmm. See that? Yep. The, law, the law that was... That he knows the law, but he doesn't know the spirit of the word. The spirit of the word. Yes. See that? Yes. You got to know the spirit of the word. You can read word all the time, but you got to know the spirit of the word. How we know that? Say by the, the spirit of the truth himself. Glory to God. So how does Jesus answer him? He answers him with a parable. Now, let me, let, let me say something here. As we start out verse 30, I want to get something in our hearing so we'll know what kind of ground we're always on and, and where we stand spiritually. This, when it says Jesus answering him, answering means to take up. Hear that? You hear that? So if you're taken up, the ground is moved from up. No. You hear that? Listen, you're, you, with this, Jesus answering him is going to take him to a spiritual place. He's telling him it's a parable and it's a it's a hidden mystery, but it's a spiritual thing, and we can hear it. Thank God if we can hear this. See that? Hallelujah. So what does he say? He answer him says, a certain man, the man is added by the translator, so you know. I don't know what Bible you're reading out of, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest that way, 
When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Now, this is where we got to really let this thing about a neighbor get down in our hearts. See, in, a, in, the, in the Jewish culture, as long as you were a Jew, a member of that nation, you're considered a neighbor. Now see, in Christ, it goes bigger than that. Every nation, kindred, and tongue. Now you've got a picture here of a priest and a picture of a Levite. And they see this, this man who robbers have, the thieves have, have attacked him, left him half dead. And some people may criticize what what they didn't do, but I'm here to tell us what they can't do, so we'll stop trying to make religion do something that it can't do, and everybody hear the message of the Spirit and the Bride and come up higher. In the Spirit, Jesus answering has removed the ground from under us, so we need to be up in the heavenlies and receive this glory to God. And it'll be ministered to us from that same position, we will walk it out from that same position in the heavenlies. You see that? Glory to God. See, hallelujah. I hope we understand that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See, you got to understand now, they're dealing here with, we're going to see someone now that's introduced in verse 33. It says, but a certain Samaritan. Now, this way I want to tell you something else about Luke that you'll find about this book. Luke, you see the Lord Jesus always reaching out to the outcasts. See that? People, well, didn't the woman at the well, what'd she say? When he asked, well, are you asking me? You a Jew? Asking something, must be something about him that let her know he was a Jew. <laughs> you asking me for water? You have no dealings. Remember what she said? The Jews have no dealings. So he's coming, setting something, he's setting something heavenly in the midst. Now, one thing that we need to understand, ju just because we don't understand it, or just because we're not ready to receive it, or whatever the reason may be, it does not stop this wonderful new order of the kingdom of God from coming in and taking its rightful place. Here you see the kingdom, it's like coming in and it's coming up, and it's coming over that that's in place. There's nothing, there's nothing religion can do to stop that. You see, that's why when you have a people that begin to walk in this light and walk in this life, you may or may not be received by other people who are supposed to be seeking the same thing. You see that? Because it's a kingdom, it, it comes and invades and, and, and ignorance doesn't stop it. You're not going to stop it. <laughs> or even, even trying to come against it with force. You're not going to stop it. Why? Because it's by his spirit. Right. It's by the spirit of God. So that's what I'm trying to get us to see. So like many of, us, many of us may have been taught, don't worry about what they couldn't do, what they didn't do, because I'm telling you, according to this new realm, they can't do it. All right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So what does this Samaritan do? But a certain Samaritan, as he what? That's an important word. He journeyed. He journeyed. Brother, brother just read this this morning from, from Chronicles. Uh, 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 you're a pilgrim. See that? We're, we're a pilgrim. There's a, there's a difference in, in this, this status. You've got to understand this because beautiful spiritual things are starting to come in the picture now. We see one, he just happened to be there. Just had to pray, just happened to be at that situation. You see what I'm saying? And then it said, likewise, uh, the, 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 the Levite was the same way <clears throat> when he was at the place. See, but here you have the Samaritan, he's journeying. Look, I say it like this, we're trying to fit in, you don't fit. And, and, and you're not going to fit in that. You see what I'm saying? A spiritual picture is, is beginning to emerge beautifully here, glory to God. So we see that he journeyed. What did he do? He came where he was. See that? Now did you notice? Did you notice that the priest and the Levite, they're on the other side. 
They can't be on this side. You, you, right, you, right, you right. hear this? They can't. Be, they, they can't come and minister here. It won't. That they won't help where this is and with what Jesus is is presenting here for our learning. Glory to God. It said he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. What did he do? He went to him, bound up his wounds. Well, who is this starting to sound like now? This sounds start like somebody else that's been despised and rejected, huh? Right. See that? He he bound up his wounds. What did he do? <clears throat> Pouring oil and wine. Well, this oil and wine, this is speaks to the work of his day. Right. You've got spiritual things, spiritual symbols here right. now. Right. He's working with spiritual things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And what did he do? He puts in the, in the uh, oil and the wine, which Joel addresses beautifully. I just almost in my heart want to go to Joel and, and read a little bit just so we see something. I'll finish this verse. It said, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Now there's some powerful truths in verse 34 that we don't want to skip over. But I want us to go over to Joel. Hold something at our base here and go to Joel chapter uh, 2. So we'll give me a little chance to get over there for some pages. Stuck together. Joel chapter 2. Let's just read, read a little bit here. Two particular verses that I want us to see. Um, look in, in, uh, verse 19. It says, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. See, what is he doing? The reproach is being, being taken away from this one who's, who's the, who the, the, the thieves have come upon. You see that? But if you go back up to the, to the start of this chapter, an alarm is, is, is being sounded. You see that? But it sounds so great, it sounds so great and terrible but it's so powerful. Verse 1 begins in, in Joel chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh. Listen, for it is nigh at hand. As what is it? A day of <clears throat> darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, and the morning, as the morning rather spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there. And have not been forever the light. I'm telling you, there's a there's an army that's been raised up. The counterparts are already there in the spirit. Our people are growing up into their spiritual measure. Somebody please hear God. God's not fixing anything somewhere off somewhere. Everything is prepared, and by faith, and if we grow up into it. Hallelujah. We're growing up into our spiritual measure, which is the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can y'all hear that? Nothing less than that. Right. Nothing less than that. So it says, a fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burned. I remember when this scripture set in my heart. It blessed me so much because I saw something. The, the land before them, the prophet continues, is as Eden. Mm -hmm. Behind them, the fire now has devoured behind them. There's nothing back there. It's just like when the people, children of Israel, were in the wilderness and they cried, we want to go back to Egypt. What are you going back? How are you getting back? There's nothing back there. You see that? So there's nothing back there. Eden is before us. What? Why is Eden before us? God's plan didn't change. Eden didn't go anywhere. Right. I'm so glad my pastor explained it to me. I thought, well, maybe because man had to eat, had to go somewhere. No, he didn't go anywhere. Was the man was yeah, what? Driven out. Yeah, he was cursed. That's right. See that? Yeah. Eden is before us. Right. Now, I, now I tell you what, you can be joined to the Lord, and you can stand there and guard it. I'm guarding Eden. That's right. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. You don't understand that? The Lord help you by the Spirit, because I know that I am. It says cherubims are guarding the what? Cherubims are there. What? There's a there's a sword 
that turns every which way that you're not going to get back. What is that? That's the sword of truth. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yep. That's the word of God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. If we're going to get back into, listen, what Jesus has done is put us back in our pristine state before God the Father, bless his holy name, and if a people will receive it and walk into it by the Spirit, but you can't help, you can't be on the ground. That's why when he answers us, he lifts us up. Mm -hmm. So that we can walk in that this true. Praise the Lord. And many, many, many like some, <clears throat> many sons of God that know who we are, what the spiritual counterpart is. You are, you are a living creature. Yes. Joined to the Lord. A living creature, glory to God. You in, in union. You can't be pulled away from you because you built into the lid of that ark. Remember the cherubim? Mm -hmm. They're made into the lid. You lift the lid, you lift them. Why? They're in union. What is the lid? That's the mercy seat. Jesus Christ shed blood as a propitiation for our sin. We're in union with that. And when you know that and don't cast it off and don't leave it, we'll be blessed. Amen. And we'll see some things. But we can walk with him in the cool of the day again. We can walk with him in the spirit of his day again. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we'll be clothed in light. We are not naked and ashamed. Glory to God because Jesus Christ has restored us back right. unto him. Right. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we see these wonderful things being going on over here in, in Joel. Also in um, verse 24 of that same chapter 2, we, we see this, uh, this appearance of these, um, of these ones that, that are going forth with the word of God. Back up to verse 4 there. It says, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. I thank God. I've seen that. I've seen that in a vision. I know how that looks spiritually. I say it like this. The, the appearance is so great because they're in union with the word. Their message is the same, one and the same. Who they are and their message, you can't separate them out. Praise the Lord. So when we go down to verse 24, it says, <clears throat> so what's going to happen as a result of all this? As, after Judah is saved, what's, what's going to happen to this? It says, the floor shall be full of wheat and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. So my point for going on there then, as we go back to Luke 10, is to show us this, that when Jesus comes ministering out of this power, it's not going to be a substitute. He's showing them in the parable to fix this wound. I need to put oil and wine in it. You see that? You don't use different stuff. This is, I can't let the Lord show me something and come in here and tell you something else. Well, I won't tell them that. I will say that. I will I'll fix it this way, or I'll fix it that way. That's why you've got powerless people now, because they, they, they're changing, tur turning the word of God to make it appease people's ears and, they, and their faces. Mm -hmm. See, hallelujah. I'm seeing you and I'm not seeing you at the same time. I just say it like that, because I'm ministering, I'm saying what it is that God says, I'm seeing who you are by the Spirit. And I know who you are by the Spirit can receive everything that I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So a face doesn't, it, it really doesn't, it doesn't change the message, you see. So when we, we come, you can't change up things. So when he's in his parables, he's speaking things out of who he is. He is the oil. He is the wine. What else would he use to, to heal these wounds? <clears throat> but this wounded one that, uh, that the robber has come and what left? Half dead. See that? Oh, God is working with us. Now let's go back to verse 34. And Luke, we want to pick up a couple other things there. Again, it reads, and... This Samaritan, when he said, went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast. I said like this. Now listen. Back then, this language would have meant what? A vehicle. See that? To, to transport him. But listen. I'm putting you on my own. My own vehicle. Once, you, once we get... Bound up and healed with the oil and the wine, we have to be on his vehicle, which is spiritual. See that? It says, what did he do? He brought him to an end and took care of him. Now here we need to hear something. This word end is, is not the same as, remember when Jesus was born and they say, oh, that you, in fact, it's in Luke. You go back up to chapter 2 and it talks about how there was no room for them in the end. That's different than this word. Listen, listen and see if you can hear the difference. Over where it was talking about 
Mary and Joseph before Jesus was born, that's a lodging place. See that? This inn is a different Greek word altogether, but it's a place of receiving strangers. Can y'all hear the difference in that? Can you hear that? I can hear the spiritual difference in that. See that? See, oh, in, in chapter 2, you may or may not have been a stranger, but here you show enough a stranger at this one. You see that? Yeah. Isn't that? See, this is so consistent. Everything, this work of the Lord, now that he's bound up, he, he's already, listen, the Samaritan is what? Journeying. So now this man's position is the same as his. He's what? A stranger. Stranger and pilgrim. You see the thing here? So once this ha this transaction happens by the Spirit, don't try to fit back in the world. Right. You see that? We're in it, but we're what? We're not of it. Right. Be here and exist, do what it is God has for us assigned to do, which is why he still has, still has us here. But we uh, know that this is not home anymore. You see that? It's not home. Glory to God. So then, indeed, verse 34 says, And on the morrow, when he departed, he took two pence. Two pence. Your Bible may say denarius. You know what a denarius it means? A denarius means, if you just look it up, it means just containing tin. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Containing tin. Mm -hmm. A silver. Of course, it's containing tin. But isn't that, isn't that wonderful how the scriptures are just so uniform spiritually and nothing is out of place when it comes to this wonderful spiritual life that we have in Christ Jesus. So he took two pits. Now, Two pence happens to equal the shekel of the sanctuary. Elders laughing over there. It's just amazing. Yes. It, it, I'm telling you, it's the same for me. I'll sit at my desk, I'll be in prayer, and, and sometimes I just have to slide the chair back, or sometimes I'll spin around in it. I just can't believe it. It's just, it's just so, when I say I can't believe it, that's just to, 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 to show you how wonderful it is. I can believe it and I do believe it, which is why he keeps opening himself up and, and showing like he does. Right. It's so what This, the price he paid here is the shekel of the sanctuary. It didn't matter who you were, Amen. how much money you had, everybody had to pay the same thing. Right. What's that called? The ransom money. Somebody please hear God and stop putting this this cloud over people like they got to do something of their own except believe God that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody please stop putting all this extra stuff in to the people of God. It's confusing to them and this is really the simplicity in Christ Jesus that Paul the Apostle talked about and preached about. Bless God. Hallelujah. It's not the heart about. So then, it's wonderful, isn't it? He gave them to the host. See that? Yeah. And said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay. You see this? Mm -hmm. You got this, 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 this day of working here. Glory to God. Verse 36 says, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves. See now that you now that you know the law and now that we've been raised up on good ground where this whole day, like today and then tomorrow, this this wonderful day of the Lord, like the prophet said, in in his day shall every man be called his neighbor under his vine and fig tree. See that? That's, that's why Nathaniel, how did Jesus answer Nathaniel? Remember that? Go to scripture and find that. I saw you under the, uh, under the fig tree. See that? I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel. Remember that? Yes. How, how, how do you know me? I saw you under the fig tree. God is not playing. This is not a game. I don't know why why ministry has become so so careless with some people. This is not a game. This is life. 
This is eternal life for people, praise the Lord. Says verse, verse 36, uh, again, who, who thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy, see that? He that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do what? Do thou likewise. Let me tell you something about mercy. Mercy is not only the kindness that you show somebody. Anybody could have done that. This mercy is different. Anybody can do nice things, and it's wonderful to be nice. But sometimes we do nice things. God taught me something. I'm just telling you he's working. This is a, this is a wonderful work. <laughs> the Lord taught me something. Sometimes we do things, kind things, but do we want to do them? You hear the difference in that? Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Okay, you, you do all these nice things, but do you really, do you really want to do them? That's what Jesus tells us. Like, now go and, and do likewise. What? This Samaritan, the picture of our Lord in action, he wanted to do this. See this? I came, everything about him, and Lord, even, even when it got really, really the hard place, but it was always still what? Nevertheless, not my will, <clears throat> thy will be done. Hear that? Glory to God. I wanted, he wanted to. He wanted to. He wanted to obey the Father. And that was Father's plan was what? To restore us back to himself. See that? I hope these things help us. I hope that they bring us, you know, continue to, yes, put light. Thank you, Bishop Paul. Bring us light and continue to light our way and make us, the more we see of him, the more we want to reflect genuine him. <laughs> Not us and him. Genuine the Lord. When, when, when you think about, when you're doing something, let us think about, are we doing it? Do we really want to do it? That's the heart of the Lord. See, only he can put that in our heart. But I tell you what we can do, we sure can practice his presence until it becomes real. How many times have I told you? Like, the, like forgiveness. The Lord gave me such a wonderful lesson in forgiveness, and I thank him for it. I thank him for it all my days. <clears throat> it took some very terrible things to happen to learn, it, but it's, he's still gone. I, in the meantime, I pray, this Lord, your will commands it. If your will commands it, I, I have to do it. That was the heart's cry. At the time, I didn't want to. Because I was still hurt and angry about some things. I didn't want to do that, no. But after a while, just by yielding to him, that began to soften. He began to deal with that stony heart. Then he began to show me why things happened like they did. But, but the lesson was for me. The lesson was for me. I learned to have mercy. See that? I learned to have mercy. I learned to show mercy. See that? I thank God. And you know what? I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Why? Because I'm walking in the earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So God bless you, his people. I always bless you. Bless you. I'm coming to you from a place where it's nothing but blessings. <laughs> so I bless you with love, life, and blessings of heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
His holy presence. He 